All right, so just after 2 o'clock Central Time, Cleveland County District Attorney Greg Mashburn announced that Rodney Anderson will not be charged for rape. If you haven't been following this story, I made a video about it when this news first broke, and I am loath to recount the details of this sordid tale. Just snap the damn ball, RJ. So first, what does this mean for football? It means Rodney Anderson goes back to paying running back, and the Sooners get to prepare for Georgia knowing that they're going to have Rodney Anderson at running back. The details of this case that we did not know, the facts that we trusted the Norman Police Department to find out and the Cleveland County District Attorney's Office to vet are these. Rodney Anderson's accuser said that there was sexual activity, but no sexual intercourse. Now, the thing she had accused him of was rape by instrumentation, which is sexual activity, but not technically sexual intercourse. Norm police found that she and Rodney Anderson had exchanged several back and forth text messages that were quote, friendly. And the part that's gonna set a lot of you off is that she did not have memory of the alleged rape until Rodney Anderson stopped responding to her text messages, especially after she made it clear that she wanted to see him again socially, which really feels like he decided he didn't wanna see her again and she got mad. I don't think it's that cut and dry or that simple because it was only after a friend spoke to the accuser's parents that the parents pressed their daughter to go and talk to the police. However, Rodney Anderson's accuser told her friend that she initially had a good time with Rodney. And it wasn't just the one friend. Multiple friends indicated that the accuser wanted to have a relationship with Anderson and even bragged about having sexual intercourse with him. And these text messages that the Norman police were able to obtain from Rodney Anderson and the victim, in addition to the testimony of the accuser's friends should have a large bearing on the Title IX investigation that the university is obligated to perform in the wake of all of this. Now, with all of that being out in the public domain, I know that there's a few of you who would like to see the victim charged with filing a false report. Greg Mashburn essentially squashed that at the press conference saying, number one, there needs to be a higher burden of proof, and number two, that they cannot prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she lied about anything. Because of the nature of the he said, she said in this situation, you can't prove what anybody believed. You can only believe and vet the information that you got in the text messages, the information you got from Rodney Anderson, the information you got from Rodney Anderson's accuser, and the testimony of the accuser's friends. Which is another way of saying the polygraph that Rodney Anderson's attorney had performed on Rodney Anderson Anderson's behalf was bunk like I'd been saying all along. Polygraph tests are not admissible in court and it was strictly a PR stunt and Greg Mashburn said as much. It had absolutely no bearing on his decision not to charge Rodney Anderson. As far as the hearing that's scheduled for Monday, December 18th, as far as Greg Mashburn knows, that is still on the docket and that victim protective order is still at issue. So that's the news on this Rodney Anderson case that was and now isn't. On the other side of the ball in the Rose Bowl, Georgia middle linebacker Natres Patrick also isn't being charged with a crime. The Barrow County, Georgia district attorney vetted the evidence as collected by the police in their investigation and decided that Natres Patrick could go free. I just know I want to get back to talking football. I don't particularly like it when we have to have these conversations about life outside of football. It's the reason that I have this channel because I just want to have a place where we can talk football. We can talk trash, but we can be family. We can agree. We can disagree. We can come together every night at six o'clock where we will talk about OU football, college football, sports in general. Have a good time. And I'm so sorry that today doesn't feel like one of those days, but it's also the thing that most people who come to this channel want to talk about. So let's hash it out in the comments. Let's get our feelings out there about what we believe should be done, what we believe shouldn't be done. But mostly, let's get back to talking football. Cause I was planning to drop a scheme video today, but it got hijacked by this Rodney Anderson impromptu press conference put together by Greg Mashburn, who obviously was grandstanding and doing this for political reasons because he wants Sooner fans in Cleveland County to remember this come election day. But I particularly think this could have been handled with a statement sent out to the media. Instead, it becomes this event that we all have to gear our attention around at 2 o'clock Central Time on a Thursday. So if anybody's to blame in here, I say it's Greg Mashburn because he wasted our time. That's it for me. If you like the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Promise tomorrow we're getting back to football. So... I'll see you tomorrow. Deuces.